thought we'd focus today on just a quick look at the boat anchor uh, station that we have here at N9KR. Uh, and then we'll probably end up focusing uh, some on the uh, on the homebrew amplifier. As you can see, there's a couple of Drake four line setups. We like to the Drakes real well, and I usually keep one set up on 20 meters and the other one kind of ready to uh, jump to any of the other bands uh, that we like. Also, in the mix is a TS 130, a little transceiver by Kenwood that kind of a favorite. I kind of like that because it's really easy to change bands. It's it's broadband and does a good job for us. Little uh, homebrew keyer that I mentioned in one of the other videos, I believe, and has an Arduino microprocessor and some some great open source code in there by K3NG. We've modified it a little bit for our own use. Has some memories, variable speed on the front, uh, or via uh, by the keyboard here, PS2 keyboard, and uh, we can pre-program up to uh, nine memories on that real quickly. Also has, uh, we've added on a keys all circuit so that we can uh, use it with the boat anchor rigs without any troubles at all, with no problem. Okay, so uh, moving over here to the uh, amplifier, I think this is what we'll focus on a little bit. 813 amplifier we built a number of years back, and a little bit of a history behind that. So let me halt the video here and make a change and we'll get right back with you. So let's take a look at the amplifier. This is, uh, this is an 813 amplifier with two 813s in it. Glorious old tubes from the old days. Glorious old tubes from uh, the late 40s and early 50s and uh, we just had a lot of fun building this little amp. It's not a Cadillac but it's real functional for 20 and 40 meters. That's what we built it for. Uh, there's our two 813s in there in horizontal mode which you can do with these tubes. A lot of the other tubes out there you can't. Uh, you can see the let me point out just a few things here. As I said, it's it's uh, not a thing of beauty, but it works real well for us on 20 and 40 meters. On the left over there, you can see a couple of small filter capacitors and a transformer. That's our bias supply. It's 85 volts approximately for CW and about minus 55 or so for a single sideband, which we don't use a whole lot. Next transformer in the corner back there is the... Uh, filament transformer for the 813s running in parallel on the right side over here we have the tuning uh, capacitor and next to it a relatively small um, loading cap because we built this for just 20 and 40 we don't need much in the way of a loading cap it doesn't have to be very very variable uh, back behind there there's a loading coil that we scammed off of some other uh, some other old piece of gear and set it up with just two choices that we can switch select on the back between 20 and 40 meters. A little fan back there that came out of a PC configuration runs off of 12 volts to keep some air blowing across the tubes. A little variable pot in the back back there that we use to control the uh, bias voltage to set that. A couple switches in the back, one to select between the two uh, the two bands on the coil and Another one to select between uh, SSB and CW as far as the as far as the uh, bias voltage goes, and then there's some cabling that goes on off to the to the power supply over here on the front. Uh, we have a meter on there that we can uh, monitor plate uh, plate current and uh, a little switch where we can bypass the output relay. Screen, uh, the screens can be turned on or off from the front screen voltage, which runs at about 400 volts. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and turn this guy on and see what we got. So we're just applying uh, filament voltage and uh, got the fan going back there, the cooling fan. And there they go, our bottles are lit. Kind of fun. 813 has been around since about 1947-48 I believe. 
And we're back in the old 60s looking at the QST magazines and the ads in the back for uh, all the tube ads for RCA and GE. And they'd always show all the tubes you could get with the amount of watts out for each. And the, the Kings back then were the 813s. This little amp will put out just about uh, 500 watts output on CW. I run it in class B for CW. Not very efficient, about 50%, but works real well. It's easy to drive. We drive it with typically one of the boat anchor rigs, or I could also drive it with a QRP rig, actually, with a power boosted up to about 20 to 30 watts is all it takes. Also, the input on this, uh, we experimented with uh, a uh, traditional uh, tuned input for 20 and 40. Actually, you can see the hole on the left, lower left over there where we originally had to switch to select between the two uh, matched inputs and then uh, kind of disregarded that and went with a uh, passive grid input which is just dumping the input signal across the 75 ohm uh, to resistor I think it's 75 watts as well, maybe 100 takes about 20 to 30 watts to drive, works real real well again on 20 and 40 meters let me turn the power off here and we'll get to the power supply Okay, the power supply is kind of interesting. This was a piece of big iron that we picked up at a ham fest for a dollar. And one of those things that nobody wanted to take home at the end of the at the end of the ham fest. And only because it looked interesting and it had a bunch of big iron in it, mostly that big transformer you can see there. And we thought maybe we could do something with it. As it turned out, it made a pretty nice uh, pretty nice power supply for our amplifier. The transformer next to that, that uh, smaller one right in the center there, is actually a, a microwave oven transformer. It came out of a 1400 watt, I think it was a Panasonic microwave that was junked. And we went ahead and took the uh, a shunt, there you go, there you go Bob, it's a shunt. We removed the shunt and uh, and uh, experimented with this and actually had it set up, it, it'll, it'll do about uh, 2800 volts uh, as a voltage doubler for the full wave doubler circuit and we had that set up originally uh, and used it with the amplifier and it worked pretty well. Uh, we got the uh, 400 volts for the screens uh, off of a, another winding on this original transformer on the left and uh, we operated like that for about a year although the uh, the windings are kind of skinny kind of uh, kind of small on that transformer we always worried that uh, we might be pushing it just a little bit hard so we went ahead and uh, about uh, two years ago uh, uh, disconnected the uh, microwave transformer and switched to the another winding on that uh, transformer on the left which gave us uh, a little heavier duty option we still do about 2600 volts uh, after the voltage doubler on that guy and uh, that's what we're using uh, currently uh, for the amplifier switch this guy on <laughs> And we can see on the left-hand meter there just about uh, 2,600 volts, and, uh, and the resting current is about uh, 70 mils or so, which is about right.